So last lesson we looked at evidence of age inequality and we considered a number of areas in which there can be disparities between different age groups in the workplace, in media and in crime. But now we're going to look at examining those trends and looking at some explanations as to why they exist. And we're going to start today with the consensus explanation coming from the functionalist perspective. So now that we've kind of covered the evidence of age inequality and what um, evidence we can see in it in the workplace, in media, in crime. Now we need to actually look at explaining those, which is going to be kind of the focus of the 40 mark questions. And just like with ethnic inequality, age inequality has a kind of breakdown, a kind of debate that's kind of running through it, if you like. Um, and rather than kind of being cultural versus structural, this is more focused on consensus versus conflict. Um, so I quickly just kind of want to break that down quickly before we carry on. So consensus theories, when we think of consensus theories we think functionalism essentially as being the main and most primary consensus theory. Um, but broadly consensus theories would argue that age inequality is not the result of some kind of insidious oppression or some kind of um, group trying to play down another, um, it's the result of almost, because society is structured around a value consensus, it's structured on a basis of agreement, so therefore any inequality suffered by an age group is more or less their fault. Um, you know, for instance, you could look at the, the elderly and say, well, they are actually um, perhaps disadvantaged because they are less skilled, they are less well versed in the digital economy for example. Um, perhaps it is that the elderly are just more physically um, incapable when compared to the youth. Um, so consensus theories are, are kind of looking at the age groups and seeing what it is that they're perhaps doing wrong that's making them suffer age inequality. Um, the two theories which kind of fit within that consensus framework are functionalism, which is kind of, the, again, the primary consensus theory, uh, but also the new right. So then you have conflict theories, which is kind of the other side of the debate, which is arguing that society is generally constructed in a way that is forged out of conflict between groups. Um, and so, as a result, age inequality is also the product of a conflict between groups. The most common example of that is going to be Marxism, which we'll look at um, probably next week. So, the purposes of today is just to kind of look at the broad overview of consensus or functionalist based explanations um, and then. You know, just like the similar format we, we, we've done before, then look at some specific studies uh, next lesson on Monday. So functionalists in general terms argue that society and its social institutions all function almost like parts of the body do. In the organic analogy, functionalists would argue that just like organs of a body all perform a function to keep the wider body working and functioning, so do institutions and parts of society all function and perform roles in order to keep society functioning. And they would argue that exactly the same case can be seen in ageing and age groups. Each age group performs a specific role and a positive benefit for not only society but the actual people going through these ageing processes. For example, they would argue that it's necessary and beneficial for a child or a teenager to go through a period of innocence and protection from the wider society so that they can gradually learn and adapt to the society around them without it all just being kind of overwhelming and dangerous for them. Likewise, it's natural and beneficial for elderly people to slowly withdraw from the responsibilities and their work in order that they might be able to reflect on their lives and to also free up jobs and opportunities for younger people. Just like with many things, functionalists would argue that if a certain pattern emerges in a society, then it must be for a good and positive reason. Otherwise, there's very little chance that it would emerge in the first place. So, for example, if 
It's common that teens are generally quite rebellious and assertive in their independence, then that's probably for a good reason, not only for the person um, doing the rebelling, but also for wider society. So what would I say if I had to summarise the functionist view of age inequality in a sentence? I would say that the functionist view of age inequality is that the reason why there is disparity between different age groups is because it performs a positive function for society, essentially. Um, and then obviously we can expand on that uh, when, when we look at some specific positive functions that it might perform. But that kind of encompasses its general view, essentially, in a sentence. Um, the reason why we have gaps and the reason why we look at different age groups differently is for valid societal reasons, essentially. They're not just kind of arbitrary. We didn't just kind of make up that the elderly can be a little bit bumbling sometimes. Functionalists would argue that that's almost natural. We're going to view them that way. Um, because essentially, if you look back at what they say with gender, functionalists incorporate quite a lot of biology into their thinking. So they would argue that kind of a lot of the way that we see ages and a lot that we, um, the way that we treat different age groups is based on biological facts. Um, so, you know, the reason why we might be a little bit more gentle towards children is because they biologically can't function themselves. And equally, the, the same way where we, we might infantilize the elderly a little bit is because they might be... Um, slightly less able to do the things that the adults would. Um, so they, they wouldn't say it's necessarily kind of a social construct, as um, some theories might do later that we look at. They argue that the kind of biology creates a certain set of conditions for different age groups, and society, in order to function properly, kind of changes the way that we treat them accordingly. So if functionists argue that age inequality is necessary and emerges because it is necessary for a functioning society, then the question arises as to why perceptions of age groups were radically different, say, 200 years ago. Back then, there wasn't really the concept of a teenager or, or, or a youth. You were essentially a very young child and then you were an adult. And equally, there wasn't much distinction between an adult and someone that was elderly. The expectations placed on you were roughly the same, which is why many would argue that age is a social construct. However, what functionalists would argue, they would probably accept that social construct does exist in age to a large extent. You know, perceptions will change between societies and between different time periods. But what functionalists would argue is that with the Industrial Revolution, work became far more skilled. With the development of the service economy and manufacturing, in order to really provide a functioning economy, society needed trained workers that were essentially able to perform the more complex tasks. They could no longer just kind of work in their cottage industry where they're they might take up an apprenticeship under their parents or something. Now they had to do complex tasks and that required education. And it, but more importantly, it required children to move outside of the home. Whereas before they could have just worked in cottage industries, now they had to work outside in factories, in, in businesses that were not inside their own home, away from their parents. And so this led to the development of a kind of youth where you will be um, gradually building up independence you might be sectioned off in full-time education all of this allows for a fully functioning well-performing economy that, that wasn't necessarily required uh, when there wasn't really such thing as, as different age groups so much of that theory comes from Parsons who basically traces the rise of different age groups, and in particular the youth, to the emergence of the Industrial Revolution, uh, kind of 1800 onwards, I suppose. Now, if we're evaluating functionalism and consensus theories as a whole, there is kind of one major criticism that runs through the whole set of consensus theories, and 
again, I, I encourage you to evaluate this later on with, with conflict theories, but the main criticism that they will always receive is that they generalize everyone's experience of age. They assume what we call homogeneity. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that quite right, but they, they assume that, and what I mean by that is that what they assume is that everyone experiences age the same way, that everything is homogenous. So everyone goes through their teenage years or their youth in exactly the same way as everyone else. Everyone ages in exactly the same way. And we know that that is not the case. You know, we can look at an individual case by case basis and someone's experience of old age, for instance, is heavily influenced by their class. You know, whether or not you're aging in a two million pound mansion is going to be vastly different to whether or not uh, you are on the poverty line and aging. So the main criticism of not just functionalism, but consensus theories um, on the whole is that it seems that, you know, that age is equally experienced by everyone and it's not. So just the one thing then we need to go over in terms of consensus theories is the general view of the new right. So the new right are also a consensus theory because they argue that generally society is built in a way that functions and performs positive roles. Charles Murray would argue that age inequality is down to differences in culture between the different age groups. He would argue that the youth in particular have been raised in a culture which glorifies the welfare state and does not place a high enough value on responsibility. Therefore, they are socialised into irresponsible behaviours and generally do not value the kind of skills and knowledge that would mean that they advance in the workplace. Therefore, Charles Murray would argue that the youth suffer inequality because they are in a skills deficit, which essentially means that they do not have the required skills in order to succeed in the workplace or elsewhere. They are too busy with irresponsible behaviours and generally almost lazy. So the common agreement that's shared between the new right and functionalism is that they both argue that it's not society's fault that certain age groups are suffering a disadvantage. It's because of certain characteristics within the age groups themselves that are almost natural or unavoidable. For functionalists, it's more a kind of biological thing that the youth need to be protected, they need to assert independence, and so therefore they behave in a certain way which disadvantages them in, in, in terms of their media portrayals and that kind of thing. With the new right, it's because they're socialised um, into irresponsible behaviours. But either way, they both see it as being the fault of the age groups themselves. Society is broadly based on consensus. Remember that as kind of the core aspect of a consensus theory. So if you're not achieving the same as everyone else, it's because you're not living up to the values that society has broadly agreed upon. The main evaluation of the new right is that, it again, it's, it's a kind of victim-blaming theory. It points at people who are perhaps suffering on um, benefits, who are suffering on the poverty line, and demanding that they behave in, in, in a certain way. But as, as we look at kind of previous evaluations of, of Murray that we looked at before, Murray assumes that the kind of underclass that he calls them, um, or people that are immersed in this dependency culture, um, who are on some kind of state aid, all have values which contradict with the rest of society. But studies have been done which have actually proved the opposite, that that's not necessarily true that they do actually share many values with the broader society. So for final thoughts then, functionalism in particular is a consensus structural theory and a consensus structural explanation of age inequality. Um, the reason why I've gone over the new right as well in terms of that is because they're very closely related to functionalism. You know, the new right is often seen as the kind of political wing of, of functionalism, like you might remember. Now, um, the kind of main evaluation is the fact that they do tend to see 
the experience of age as very homogenous, as very similar. Whereas, as we can see, class, ethnicity even, all of these things can change the way that someone experiences how they age through the different age groups. Um, then we'll look at next lesson some specific studies, primarily Parsons and Cummings and Henry, who go into quite a lot of detail about the ageing process and the different roles that each age group performs. Um, in terms of notices, you may already be experiencing this, but um, as of, I believe, next Monday, two of my groups are being marked by different teachers. So my column A group, if I'm understanding this correctly, are being marked by Ellie, who's um, joining the sociology team, and column F is being marked by Mandy. Um, it's not going to be any different. You won't notice any change. It's just they're taking some marking off me so I can um, devote some time to doing the videos. Um, and, you know, may maybe this will mean I'll be able to do some more special effects or, or something uh, with the extra time. Um, but it will also mean that you get your marking back hopefully a lot quicker um, because I'm not having to mark you know, 90 plus essays and do this at the same time. So you won't notice any difference. It's just, a, you know, someone else will be marking it. So that's all really. Um, but any questions, you can you still forward them on to me, obviously. Okay, so that's kind of all I want to cover today. Again, probably a little bit shorter today. Um, but next lesson will be more specific studies, some more specific uh, concepts. That's probably going to be the more in-depth uh, video.